Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, before we begin about speaking better, I just want to remind you that if you are coming to the UK, please beware of the cows. Now, every time I say that, someone always tells me, oh, Teacher Joseph, you're so funny. Of course, cows aren't dangerous. But actually, they are. Uh, Over the weekend, in our news, we have another couple who were attacked by cows on the beach. And they were taken away to hospital and later discharged. They were very lucky because cows here, nobody really knows why, are quite violent. Some people think it's because of the increasing sounds or sound pollution, noise pollution within UK culture. Other people think it's because the cows are protecting their young. Uh, It's very sad. It's very sad. But whatever the reason, cows these days are a little bit more violent. And I'm not talking about bulls. I'm talking about cows. So if you are coming to the UK, if you are happily trotting through the mountains or whatever, um, please, please, please don't go near the cows. And if the cows start staring at you and moving towards you, you should get out of there very, very quickly. Now, I myself have been surrounded by cows in the past. Uh, They can be very intimidating and they will knock you to the ground and stomp on you. So please, if you are coming to the UK, be very careful if you're walking in nature because these cows are really dangerous. I know it sounds the most ridiculous thing. When I was a boy, I remember coming across cows, but they weren't particularly dangerous. They just stared at me in the way cows do. But now the the cows will run at you, particularly if you or on a bike, or if you have a dog. So please, please, please stay away from the cows and don't let them anywhere near you. Ah, right. Okay, so moving on to speaking better. <clears throat> now, every time I do one of these things about speaking better, uh, many of you come to me and tell me, oh, but I know there's no way I can speak like a native. And I hear this a lot in English classes. I don't know where the drama comes from. I mean, you can do anything you want if you really put your mind to it. There is a myth out there which says that someone learning a language can't speak like a native. Of course you can. Of course you can. So if you really want to, you just need to practice more, you know. Um... I think the problem is when you first begin trying to talk like a native, it seems to be a little bit superficial and it seems to be a little bit fake. That's, I think, what puts people off because you're trying to do something like a child would and it just sounds bad. And it does take a lot of practice, but you two can really speak like a native if you want. So, Can we just leave the drama, please? (laughs) The next time you have a lesson with me and you're going to do one of these statements, oh, but I know I'm different. Oh, I can't speak like a native. I know I never will. Oh, please, change the record for goodness sake. Anyway, it is entirely possible for you to speak like a native if you really want to. It involves a lot of work. It involves focusing specifically on accent. And more importantly, it means finding a voice you like and really copying that person. Now, when you do that, uh, I admit in the first few months, few weeks, whatever, it does sound just a little bit fake. So I, I do understand. But as you progress and trust yourself... Um, it does get better. It's all about identity, who you want to be. 
it's not really just about copying a voice you don't know. It's about who you want to be in the English world, which is why you really need to find a place of belonging. Let's say London, for example, uh, and a nice accent that you want to speak like. And uh, if you do the shadowing, as I'm always telling you, it is entirely possible to speak better. So there we are. So um, I, I do understand it's difficult, okay? But it's not impossible. So I want you to be focusing on that. We here in the UK, we all speak differently. I mean, you probably don't notice. You probably just think it's English, but... All across the UK, we have a regional accents. And then we also, of course, have a diversity amongst ourselves. You know, it's very easy to hear if someone is an Indian-born uh, British person. They may not sound fluent. Or if they're, let's say, a British-born Chinese person. Um, with diversity, we, we get to recognize a lot of voices you can say, oh, that person sounds African. Oh, I think that person was Indian. You know by the tones, not by the accent, but by the tone. Uh, there's a lot of diversity in the UK. And on top of that, of course, we have our subcultures, which often carry with them particular traits of that culture. Um, I'm not going to get into details on that because I don't want to sound discriminatory. But uh, you get to know different accents, different tones, if you're able to listen. And of course, on top of that, we have American English, Australian English, South African English, Indian English. Uh, so you really need to start tuning into this kind of thing. In very broad, general terms, though, a really good way to start would be to think carefully about where you belong, who you want to be in the English-speaking world. Uh, and the other thing which we all have in common, I think, is our mouth movement. So British people generally, we pull our mouth movement down when we're talking, whereas many cultures in the world speak horizontally with their voices going from, well, with their mouths going from side to side. So you want to be pulling your mouth down. I think that's a, a really good start. It all begins by copying. So just have a look on on YouTube. And uh, <clears throat> as I've often mentioned, there's, there's actually uh, a chart which I use, <clears throat> which you'll find by Googling anti-moon uh, sounds of English. There's a lot of stuff. In there, which would help you covering received pronunciation. Uh, so lots to think about there, lots to think about. Begin with the vowel sounds <clears throat> and just uh, begin to shadow. Hear someone, don't try to work out what they're saying. Just copy whatever you think you hear, even if it is not something recognizable as words. Just try to copy it at the same time. Uh, and very quickly, you'll be on your way to imitating someone and changing the way you speak. I mean, you don't have to sound like Shakespeare. And I'm not suggesting for one moment that you run away to a mountain wearing sandals and sit there meditating about this. Uh, you don't need to be developing something which is absolutely perfect. But you just need to get away from these spaces between the words, you know, hello, teacher, Joseph, I am from, you know, you just need to get your breathing going, covering those spaces because it sounds more fluent with a bit of intonation. Yeah, that that's all. That's all. So, oh, did you hear um, Drew Barrymore on TV the other day? She's apparently got a new TV chat show, ironically, called the Drew Barrymore Chat Show. <laughs> and uh, she was apologizing because Hollywood's currently on strike. 
uh, and the writers are striking for some reason, I don't know why, and she wanted to make her chat show, and of course the writers turned against her and said, you're not supporting us, you you should be doing what we are doing, refusing to make anything at this time. And so she went on TV uh, a few days ago, and her intonation and her English was very broken because she was being very emotional. I'm sure you'll find it on YouTube. I want to apologize to people. So you see, even we have our moments when we're emotional. But uh, yeah, you just need to be working a little bit more with making your presentation smooth. Now, these emotional moments that some students have, oh, I know that my accent will never improve. It's not helpful. <laughs> and the more you declare these things, the more they become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you really think you won't speak like a native, then you won't. So stop saying it. Otherwise, you really will find that uh, your pronunciation won't improve. Well, that's it for me. I hope these little tips are helpful. Uh, please keep in mind um, that in order to speak English fluently, you really need to be a bit more positive. Try believing that you can do it. That would be a really good start. I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. But uh, it's something to um, to start with. And that's it. So I'm off now to visit the doctor for another round of blood tests. Honestly, over the last few months, I've gone from not having a social life to being best friends with the doctor and the pharmacist. <laughs> Oh, and the nurse as well, of course. Um, right, that's it for me. See you all again soon. Take care. Bye.